What does the addition of can-do statements for mediation in the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages mean for young learners? Looking at the big picture, mediation can-do statements help us define key communication skills for collaboration, intercultural communication, reformulating information and ideas, and acknowledging other viewpoints. All of these can be an important feature of lifelong learning if we are to prepare learners for the future and equip them with the skills they need to thrive in an increasingly connected world. So, can or should you consciously focus on mediation activities with young learners in the language classroom? And if so, how? And at what points in the learning journey? The CFR doesn't prescribe this, but rather offers choices. So to address the question for different age groups, we need to review what is meant by mediation in terms of 1. Mediating texts, such as explaining and evaluating the content of something you have understood. 2. Mediating concepts, for example, when you're collaborating in a group to develop new ideas. 3. Mediating communication, for example, when participating in an intercultural exchange. And 4. Strategies for mediation, such as adapting your use of language to help others understand better. Mediation is a natural feature of both social and academic communication, and there are numerous things that already happen in language classes for young learners that involve some aspects of mediation. By exploring the mediation can-do statements for different levels of language ability, we can select and adapt them to set learning goals appropriate to the needs of different age groups. At the same time, we should remember that learners can't be expected to develop in a uniform way the literacy, thinking skills and social skills that facilitate mediation activities. Let's take, for example, the scale called Collaborating to Construct Meaning. This kind of collaboration assumes a level of social and cognitive maturity, and there are no can-do statements at pre-A1. However, it is possible to start building classroom routines that foster an understanding of what collaboration means and equip learners bit by bit with useful language for working together towards a shared goal. For this to happen, predictable routines are very important, as very young learners need to understand exactly what is expected from them and what is going to happen next, especially when working with others. Lessons might have a regular pair and share phase, where you use visuals and movement as prompts for learners to practice keywords and body language for showing interest, asking questions, sharing materials, agreeing and listening carefully. Stories can be a good way of illustrating values for collaboration and sharing, and familiar characters can provide role models in posters and reminders. At higher levels, learners can work in groups with different roles according to their strengths. For example, taking turns to be a monitor to award medals for the use of known routines and phrases. In secondary education, learners have the relative cognitive maturity to be able to engage in consensus and problem-solving tasks that involve mediating concepts together. The key here is to select topics that are personally relevant and tasks that have a clear goal. Another broad area is mediating texts. At low levels, this can include relaying simple information and instructions. And communication in the classroom offers plenty of opportunities for this. Set up routines for learners to help each other and check understanding of task instructions in order to address different levels of ability. Retelling simple stories with the help of pictures can lay the groundwork for expressing personal reactions to creative texts. And at higher levels, exchanging information from different texts 
can promote basic paraphrasing and summarising. As each course progresses, you can guide learners to start self-assessing their own performance in mediation-oriented tasks and to think about what they can improve next with the help of simple statements of what they can do. The CFR invites us to adapt can-do statements to context and the language classroom for young learners is just such a context where selective adaptation is key.